Hello and welcome back to another Cultist Astronaut video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Entity Editor, or what I've been dubbing it as the Entity Creator. Although, you can also use it to create agents, and that's because all of the entities in my game use the same data structure, uh, making it easy for us to add properties, share properties, and also share uh, behavior among all of them. Now, in special cases, we don't use entity, right? Uh, we will, like for example, I don't use entity for my world or for my rooms. Those are their own constructs. But for most things in the game, like something you blow up or a door you go through or an enemy you fight, they, they all share very similar properties. The way they're rendered, the way you attack them, the way you interact with them. They all have very similar <clears throat> attributes. So in this game, we use um, a mega struct to bundle all of that uh, data together. And then if we do notice that something needs to be optimized or it needs to be handled in a, spe in a special way, then we will break it out. Um, so in here, what we have now is we have a new option for entity and we're going to add more options in the future, but right now we have this option called Create Agent. And this is what we are calling our enemies or AIs in the game. They're called agents on the editor side. And if I click that, it opens up the Entity Editor. And it opens it up with some pre-configured flags. So it turns on the spine renderer, it turns on character animations, and it turns on the AI brain property sets. And so, um, yeah, for example, I can give this new character a name. We'll call this the Knight Cutter. That's actually an enemy in the game that we want to create. Under Spine, we can select a Spine Asset. These were already imported over here. So if I type in, um, I believe they're under .json right now. Uh, but you'll see we have the Goatling, the Flayed Grunt, the Flying Skull, and we also have a, I believe that's the the pistol version of the flayed grunt. And this is the night cutter, so we're going to want to use the pistol version of the flayed grunt. And you'll see it now renders uh, this object. And in here we can configure some stuff. It already pre-populates uh, this with some defaults that are pretty acceptable, so we don't have to change those. Under skin we're going to select night 00 pistol. And that's going to change the, the graphics of this uh, spine object. And these skins, they come from uh, the spine editor, which is a 2D animation uh, software that we use to create these. And Harlan has went through and created um, various skins that we can use for each character type. Uh, this one only has two, but some of the other characters have many. And under here we can set all the animations. So a big gripe that I had with uh, Unity was um, it was very difficult to create templates for character animations. You could make an override for an animation controller, uh, but it was clunky and it didn't have as much control as I would have liked. And in order to get control within Unity, you had to basically script your own system. Uh, within here, I'm in complete control of that. And what I'm doing is I'm basically setting up you know, AI templates that you can plug animations into. And so these animations will always be the same for each AI template. And um, if I want to make another, you know, character that can shoot a gun and walk around, it can use the same exact AI as uh, the previous character and I can just slot animations in without any pain. So this is like created to be very simple. So uh, we have the aim IK, which is which is what controls the arm. Uh, this right here is uh, meant to be the center of the character. I think this guy actually does have an aim center. So let's see if we can find that. I think it's called aim guide. Might be aim guide. Let me just double check. However, you can use um, you can use spine zero three, which should be like the character's like roughly center point. I'll set it to aim guide for now, and we'll check it in a second. Uh, in this editor, I actually can't view the the joints. That would actually be nice is if I'm like hovering over this option here. It like shows me a little circle gizmo. 
And let's see, we have idle, so let's set that up. So these ones should be pretty easy to find. Another great addition would be like a search bar, because some of these do get kind of big. But right now it's pretty manageable. So we have the loop, the jump land, and then the fall loop. And the reason why I have it set up like this, so we can select them, because you're probably thinking, well, why not just like hard code it to like these string values, or like why not have Harlan type in, you know, an exact, uh, you know, series of characters for each animation. And the there's two problems with that. The first one is like, well, typos are going to be an issue. Uh, but the second problem is, well, sometimes we want to make like a zombie walk, or we want to make different variants of what you see here for different types of characters. So we may use the same rig with a different skin with a different set of animations. And so this list right here can get quite long because as you can see we have walk normal, run normal. We may end up making different variants of walk which we have for some of the other characters and that's why we, we're doing it this way. And so when you get down to like the exact character type that's when you'll start seeing that these become more specific, but there may be multiple animations for each uh, spine asset. And then of course we have the AI brain. This is where it gets more complicated. We have three types of AIs right now. These will become more specific over time, but right now we have boiled it down to just these three based on what I've implemented so far. And this guy, he is a projectile walker. A walker is a character that can move around on the ground. He can jump, he can fall, he can, you know, look around the environment and see if he needs to jump over gaps. He's basically a platformer like the player. And he also uses a projectile weapon instead of melee. We do have a melee walker and we do have a projectile flyer. Now flyers do not walk around on the ground. They do not jump, they do not fall. They are basically um, able to move along the X and Y axis of the world, so they don't have all of that complexity. We're going to make him a projectile walker, and this is going to give us more options to configure. So under general AI settings, uh, I wish I actually set these to some defaults so I didn't have to go through and do this, but we'll just set these up, kind of show how that works. There's also some other settings, let's actually make that 15. There are some things I want to tweak with this so that like you can see the attack range. Again, maybe like hovering over these things or maybe you just see uh, a circle around the character that shows what this looks like. Same with FOV and range. So, oh, and I got that backwards. Let's make this 8 and let's make this 15. So we can set the sight detection range and FOV. This is how far the character uh, can see and also the range that they can see. So I set this to like 120 which should be like roughly around there. And so this can become better, right? We can make it so that you can see like the settings you're tweaking. Uh, the fire rate, let's set this to 1. So every second it will shoot a bullet. Right now you can't tweak the bullets. Uh, right now it will always shoot the same projectile. That's something that I'm going to be tweaking over the next couple days. And wall check distance, like I was saying, he can move around the environment and he can jump up walls and over gaps. I haven't exposed all the settings, but one of them is wall check distance. And we basically just say, hey, how far am I from a wall before I need to, to jump? So this is like the ray cast distance that it, uh, it performs before uh, jumping up a wall. And last uh, but not least, we have character physics. So this character is a walker, so he can fall and jump and all of that. So we need to be able to tweak his settings. Right now, he's inherited all the defaults from the player, which is fine for our testing purposes. Uh, we want to set his size to 1 and to 3. That is another downside to the entity editor. Right now, it also can't visualize the access allowed bounding box, but we'll be able to see that in a second. And then the offset should be negative uh, 0.5, which which the um, you can't see it, but the pivot's like right here. And so we set it to be 1 and 3. So we're going to take that point and we're going to shift it over so the box is on the character. So yeah, after configuring all of that, which seems like a lot, but this is much simpler than uh, what we've had to deal with before. What we were doing before was basically 
uh, modifying, so if we go to like, for example, the flayed peeler, we were modifying this file, which is just a text version of what you, what you see in the editor. And this is tedious, it's prone to bug because you can just write the wrong words and the wrong values. Um, whereas this is more structured, more friendly, Harlan and any other designer can jump in here and just start creating um, characters. So let's click, uh, let's make sure we named it, Flayed Night Cutter, let's click Create, and you'll see that it turns into a Save button. That's because we just created the asset. So if I type in Flayed Night Cutter, you'll see we now have a new asset based off of this information. If I close this editor and now open up um, one of the worlds, let's go to, let's go to the Platform Agent world just because it has some stuff that we can jump around in. Let's delete uh, this character that we had here previously. And let's grab the flayed night cutter and see. So uh, I showed this in a previous video, but basically the asset database has all of our like entities that we can spawn into the world. I can click create, spawn our new object in, and hit play and we can see how it works. And it looks like he's a little messed up. Interesting. I don't don't think I had that issue before. Let me let me see if the cutter cop does that. No, cutter cop's fine. Interesting. So um, <laughs> I did test this before making the video, so that's really uh, concerning. Uh, let's see if we can spawn in this guy. Wonder why that's happening. Oh, he's fine now. Okay. Oh, and I messed up his bullet spawning position. So let's um, let's show the other feature to this. So if I want to, I can edit the entity, right? Which takes me back to the view, right? So if I close this, it, it switches to the world view. And then if I click edit, it takes me to the entity view. So that's something that I worked on. I actually really liked that feature. It was really fun to program. I basically just like have a very basic if statement that like switches um, how the editor renders the, the game. And so I'm just turning off like, hey, don't render the game, only render the entity editor. So there's like two render functions and I'm switching between them using a state machine. And so I thought that was really cool. Uh, really, very simple, but very fun. Um, so the thing I messed up here is there is this bullet spawn point and it's set to root. And I skipped over this. This needs to be uh, the bullet spawner bone. So in spine, Harlan's setting up bones uh, for bullet spawning. And that should put it up here. And now we can click save. Before I do that, let me kind of show you what is going on on the the file side. So when I create a new entity, what it does is it creates this file that we saw earlier um, with all the settings that we provided. And then it also registers this asset with a unique ID which is kind of based on the timestamp and then there's like some kind of randomness at the end. Um, and then, um, yeah, you can see it refers to that file, tells it what type it is. And this is how we actually look it up in the asset database to load it in. But also when I create a, a entity in a world file, it will refer to this asset using this ID. So this is how we like identify objects. So now if I, um, uh, check this file in. Let's check both of them in. And then I click save. You'll see that it will pop back in here and it will show me what I changed. And the reason why I designed the file format the way it is is so you can easily see the difference between uh, the previous version and the new version. And so it's a text file. It's very friendly for merging. And you can see I changed the bone ID from 0 to 55. Very nice. And now if I go back to the game and hit play, oh, and that's another pro problem with this is I'm not reloading the entities when I change them. So in order to uh, test this, this is actually a good opportunity to kind of show how the world stuff works. So I modified this world. I added a new character. So let's click save. 
and it crashed. So <laughs> all of this is work in progress. I haven't checked it in, so that that's kind of a bummer. Um, let's make sure that we load back into there. So let me just abort this and reopen. Okay, that was unfortunate. Anyway, let's get back into this. So now we're back here in this world. Uh, we weren't able to save it, probably because um, I need to fix some stuff with my entity serialization. Okay, there we go. Let's um, spawn that guy back in. There we go. So it should work now because I reloaded the level. So that's something I need to fix is like if entities are already in the world and you edit them, uh, they have to be either recreated or they have the world has to be saved and reloaded. So that's a problem. But you can see it's working now, which is great. Let's create more. So um, let's say that I want to create a, a melee character. So we have the melee grunt. And just like before, we can set the skin. Let's do um, Knight Sword. We haven't done one of those yet. And then let's set up all of his animations. So we have the Aim Guide, which seemed to be working pretty good for the um, uh, for the other character we just created, the the Knight Cutter. Uh, since we're not using um, projectiles for this character, not at least not with a gun. Uh, we're not going to set the bullet spawn point. Uh, this is one thing that I'm also thinking about considering is, is some way to filter this information down to exactly what you need based on the AI type, which let's just get that out of the way and set that right now. So he is a melee walker. And melee walkers simply just don't use a bullet spawn point. They do they, they do have the ability to spawn a projectile when they swing their sword, but it doesn't use a bone. It uses a, a uh, offset from the root of the character to make the projectile spawn more consistent when they swing their sword. Um, I'll show that in a second. So let's just get through this. So we have idle. And yeah, the goal with this whole system is to just make iteration time faster. And as we continue to like build these systems and these editors will optimize all of this and make it really easy and convenient for us to just jump in and try out a new character. So we want jump up, jump land, and fall. And I'm not even using all of the, um, the animations yet, so there is even more improvements to be made on the, the AI side. Let's give him 125 health because he's a melee guy and we want him to be terrifying. Set the idle time, the attack range. So this is for a melee guy, um, the attack range is how close they are to you before they swing. So we want to set this to like 1.5. Uh, whereas the range people, they, uh, they will stop at the attack range and fire from a distance because they're range. So that's just showing like using the same property but for a different behavior which is what these AIs are all about. Uh, the sight detection, let's set this to like 10. Uh, let's see, wall check distance two, character physics. So this is gonna be the same as before, one and three. Negative 0.5. And we didn't name him, so we'll call this guy Flayed Knight Sword create. And so now we can spawn him in as well. So we have the flayed knight sword. And you can see he's attacking and he's using the same exact attack pattern as the, uh, the peeler. I think I gave him like way too much fire rate. That is pretty terrible. Oh, and it looks like they are... Oh, I killed the other one, I think. Yeah, like I said, I'm not exposing all the settings. So you can see they got stuck on the cliff over here. And that's because um, their fall height is not con is not configured. And that's another setting in here. So um, looking at the old system where we used to modify this, 
you can see here we have like the wall check distance. There should be a fall. Oh. Okay, that's not even exposed here yet. Okay. Yeah, more work to be done. Um, we might be using like jump height plus some other things, but, but yeah. And let's just create one more character. Why not? So um, let's let's sh let's show off the final the final type. Which um, well, actually, we don't have to do that because he already exists. So all of these characters can be created in the entity editor. And so we have the peeler, which is the same type as the knight. We have the um, the flying skull, which is the flying variant, and we have the cutter cop. Oops, and yeah, those are the five characters we have, and we created uh, these two with the editor. And this can get pretty chaotic really fast because there's a lot of enemies, and you don't typically put this mini together but you know we're showing off all of their AIs together and there's some stuff I would like to improve like it would be cool if like they locally avoided each other so instead of walking through each other and standing on top of each other like you saw there they would um, stop before they do that unless they were chasing you then we would permit overlap that would be really nice uh, we don't have that yet but that's something on the list Another thing that's really cool about this, and we're expanding it, is you can actually use it for any entity. So, like, for example, if I wanted to edit the player, you can see it actually shows me all of the, the player settings. I can change, like, the player's physics to see if, like, we want to adjust any of that, although we're pretty happy with, with some of those. Um, and he also has many skins, which we plan to use for the various, like, weapon types. And that's stuff we plan to implement. So different weapons, different projectiles. We have like the Grenader, the Storm Cannon. There's his stumpy arm. You also have the Templars, which are the opposing faction. So with the same exact like Goatling asset, we can actually uh, swap out to the Templars. We also have the Imposters, which is another cult in the game. Basically, they're crazy worms that inhabit corpses and they try to impose as a different race or a different uh, cult cultist and so you can see here we got two variants of the imposters and like I said earlier with these uh, there's actually variants of um, walking and melee so you have like the imposter melee and there should be the walk imposter and so these are very different um, and so if we wanted to, we can actually, you know, turn this into an AI. I'm actually modifying the player, so let's not do that. Uh, but yeah, that's very powerful. And then in the future, uh, we'll also be able to edit the other entities like the saw blade. So you'll see here we have, have the saw blade. And if I click edit on this, you actually don't see the asset here. So like I said, uh, work in progress, but we'll be able to modify uh, sprite-based entities as well. Uh, but yeah, that's my update for today. Um, I plan to make a few more videos showing off some of the other aspects of our game because there's been a lot of changes. Um, but yeah, that's the new entity editor, aka uh, the agent editor, etc. But yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.